from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, June the 5th, 2017. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu returned to Israel this morning after a historic visit to Western Africa. Netanyahu flew to Liberia this weekend where he addressed the Economic Community of West African States Summit, or ECOWAS in the capital of Monrovia yesterday. The prime minister had said before leaving Israel that he hoped to advance cooperation between Israel and African countries in various fields and gain support for Israel, in particular when it comes to anti-Israel votes at the United Nations Security Council. After one such vote, relations with the country of Senegal had been frozen. But Netanyahu met with Senegal's president, Macky Sall, on the sidelines of the ICAWAS summit and the two later announced the resumption of full ties. The prime minister met with about 10 African leaders in total, including with the president of Mali, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Israel does not have diplomatic relations with Mali, which is an Islamic country, but after their meeting, the two leaders agreed on the warming of relations. The meetings and the visit marked the opening of doors, Netanyahu said, between Israel and Africa, noting that changes at the U.N. would take some time, but that things were moving in the right direction. While in Liberia, Netanyahu also expressed his condolences to the people of Great Britain. After the deadly terrorist attack this weekend on the London Bridge and at the nearby borough market that left seven people dead and wounded dozens, Netanyahu pledged that together terror will be defeated. Just ahead of her expected travel to Israel this week, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley said yesterday that the location of America's embassy in Israel could very much be part of the peace process between Israelis and Palestinians. Haley told CNN's Jake Tapper that U.S. President Donald Trump's decision last week to sign the waiver regarding the embassy location and defer the possible move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem was, as the White House had stated, a matter of timing regarding a new push for peace in the region. They feel like it's moving forward in a constructive way, and he didn't want this to get in the way. I, he hasn't changed his position on moving uh, the embassy. It's all about time. So I think that he wants to see how the peace process plays out and then handle it accordingly. Haley is expected to arrive in Israel on Wednesday, June the 7th, and meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as with Israeli President Reuven Rivlin and senior Palestinian officials. The United States Holocaust Memorial in Washington announced new resources to help educate about the Holocaust. The museum's Mandel Center released the first two volumes of the Encyclopedia of Camps and Ghettos, 1933 to 1945, making them free to the public on the museum's website. The files are fully accessible through an agreement with Indiana University Press and offer content, much of which has never before been available in English. Well, tens of thousands of people marched up Fifth Avenue in New York City yesterday to show their love and support for the state of Israel. Dignitaries at the Celebrate Israel Parade included New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, Israel's Minister of Public Affairs Gilad Erdan, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, Jerusalem Mayor Nir Barkat, Israel's Ambassador to the UN Danny Danon, and several members of Congress and of Knesset. And joining them, Chemi Peres, son of the late former Israeli Prime Minister and President Shimon Peres. Earlier yesterday at a special event at Park East Synagogue just before the parade, Cuomo declared the day and every first Sunday of June to be Shimon Peres Day in New York. Governor Cuomo said this is a special day, especially for me, a day named after one of the founding fathers of the state of Israel, an inspirational man and a visionary. We will always remember his strong connection to the United States and New York. Chemi Paris said my father worked his entire life to strengthen the strategic ties between Israel and the United States. There is no greater friend to Israel than the United States. Today I came here to say thank you on behalf of my father and we continue his legacy with this march. Today, June the 5th, marks 50 years since the beginning of the Six-Day War. The IDF released video today showing how after ongoing provocations and multiple attempts to attack Israel by its neighbors, the IDF launched Operation Focus, a series of preemptive airstrikes against Egypt. 
marking the start of the war on June the 5th of 1967. We will have special programming here on JBS this week. Tonight's highlights include at 7.30 a discussion with Executive Vice Chairman of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, Malcolm Honline, who remembers his experience of the Six-Day War and the way it has influenced Israel and world Jewry. At 8, journalist and author Yossi Klein Halevi and American diplomat and Middle East expert Dennis Ross discuss the Six-Day War from a personal and historical perspective in a program of the Jewish Weekend UJA Federation. At 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Dani Ayalon, who recalls what it was like to be a young boy in the harrowing days leading up to the Six-Day War and the war's impact on Israel today. That's on L'Chaim at 9. And then later tonight at 10 o'clock, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs discusses religious violence and intolerance in our times from the 92nd Street Y. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, remarks from New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez at this year's APAC National Policy Conference. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, June the 5th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader.